Well, hello there. Welcome to class. We learned a couple things today. Pretty easy, and we'll revisit them later on. But for now, turn your notes to page 10 and follow along. We learned a couple things about uh, Newton's laws, two of the laws we've been avoiding, although talking about indirectly. If at any point you need to, just call out pause and then uh, catch up and get underway. So page 10 we'll actually talk about together. We'll worry about the details of that in class. Let's jump over to page 11. Give you the quick and dirty here about Newton's third law. It's called the law of action and reaction. So every action or force is accompanied by an equal and opposite reaction or force. You've probably heard things like this. For every action, there is a reaction. This also implies that forces only act on bodies that resist them. Forces occur in pairs. And the uh, functional definition, if A pushes or pulls on B, then B pushes or pulls back on A with the same magnitude and in the opposite direction. So we'll watch actually a little video of this. Let's pull this up over here. Here's a little Newton's third law on the space station. That's Isaac Newton, by the way. There's your force pair. So this here this is an interesting one, by the way. So you'd think, you know, what's actually propelling me forward in a car? Well, actually, your tires are pushing back on the ground. The ground is pushing now on your car. The ground actually propels you forward. So uh, there you are. This is also a fantastic car right here. There's your DeLorean. Ball on racket, racket on ball. Legs on wall, wall back on legs. So there's your rocket engine. And now we have our buddy here who's going to show us a little something with the basketball and then with another person. I know that sounded a little chunky right there. Basically, uh, he's going to push the ball, and the ball is going to push back on him. But he is noting here that he is of large mass, and the ball is of small mass. So let's clarify that for a second. We'll pick this up with another human. Newton's third law is saying the force he put on the ball is the same as the force that the ball put back on him, just opposite direction. Now, if the forces are of equal magnitude, then why isn't the result equal? And that's the part he was getting at about the mass. We'll look at that in the notes on page 11 in a minute. But if you take a force, let's say he put a 50 Newton force on the ball. Well, 50 newtons, if you look at Newton's second law, acceleration equals F net over M, 50 newtons in the numerator over a very small mass like a basketball, well, 50 over a small mass will give you a sizable acceleration. 50 newtons over his mass, which is, let's say, 80 kilograms, well, that's not much of an acceleration, which is why, though the force is the same, the result of the force, a.k.a. the acceleration, is not the same. Now... The two masses of the objects are going to be about equal. So they're going to put equal forces on each other, and let's see what happens. Something interesting to note here is the astronaut in green is actually able to put more force on his buddy than he was able to put on the basketball. And that goes back to that comment in the notes, forces only act on bodies that resist them, where you can only hit something as hard as it can hit you back. It's kind of a funny thing, but... Uh, for example, you can only hit a piece of paper as hard as a piece of paper can hit you. We'll try something out in class and you'll see that as, as hard as you may try, there's not much you can do to a hanging piece of paper.
There they both go. Cool. Thank you, gentlemen. That was helpful. All right. So let's go back over here. And, uh, you know, the problem here, we have Dean with the medicine ball. We'll try that out in class. But this says Dean pushes or throws a medicine ball. And then what's the force back on Dean? Well, the argument is that it is exactly the same. It should be exactly 150 newtons. And in fact, it should be 150 newtons, but in the opposite direction. So the way we notate that is we put a negative there. That just means the same force, but the other way. The force is negative 150 newtons. That's all. Now, the way this all makes sense, by the way, you know, it, it seems silly that how is it? You throw this medicine ball, you see it go across the room, but Dean didn't seem to go anywhere. Well, you'll see when we watch closely, Dean actually does move a little bit. He does back up a little bit. Basically, this is how it works. The force on the ball, this right here is Newton's third law, this first line. The force on the ball is equal and opposite to the force on Dean. Well, really, these are net forces we're worrying about here because, yes, they have weight and normal and all the rest of that, but those can essentially cancel out. At the moment of toss, you can then say, all right, well, that force is the net force on the ball, so we can call it its MA. F net is MA. Same thing for Dean. MA. Now, here's where the disparity in motion comes in. The ball has a small mass paired with a big acceleration. Dean has a large mass paired with a small acceleration. But it's the product that comes out the same. The n times a comes out the same. And that's how this all works out. They actually push each other the same amount, but the small mass achieves a big acceleration. The big mass achieves a small acceleration. This is really the same reasoning as we did with our conservation of momentum. Your delta P1 equals negative delta P2. So anyway, you know, we'll get into the details of this but down uh, tomorrow and the next day. But anyway, let's get into a couple of quick questions. The questions are usually very easy on this. Here they are. A mosquito flying over a highway strikes a truck. How does the force of the mosquito on the truck compare to the magnitude of the force of the truck on the mosquito? Well, those forces are doo -doo -doo -doo, the same. The force is going to be equal in opposite direction. So you could even say here force on the let me, truck is going to be the same as the force on the mosquito. And I know you may say, that's crazy. It doesn't make sense to me. Well, don't worry. We'll look at an example in class. We'll talk about that more. Who accelerates more? Now, that's a different story. No, no, it doesn't matter. The acceleration of the mosquito is not only greater, but is much greater than the acceleration of the truck because the mass of the mosquito is much less than the mass of the truck. By the way, these double greater than, double less than, those are actually significant. Those are legitimate notations. You'll see more of that in college when you start doing realistic problems and you have to approximate things. Those are legitimate. It means much bigger than. Here's another one that sometimes catches people. The Earth attracts a 600 Newton skydiver with a force of, well, 600 Newtons. What force does a skydiver attract the Earth? Well, we did a problem like this, actually. We talked about, you know, put our little Earth over here. Put our skydiver over here. Yay! There it is. So we talked about the fact that, of course, the skydiver experiences, sorry, this is a little curvy, should be straight, an FG. But if we looked at all the givens, like go to Big Ugly, and G M1 M2 over R squared, well, to calculate the force of the Earth on the skydiver and the force of the skydiver on the Earth, you actually get the same exact answer. It's the same givens. So how could that be? Well, that's Newton's third law. One thing pushes on the other, the other pushes back. There's no other way around it. And we'll talk about that again a little more in class. We can flesh that out. Anyway, so the answer here is 600 Newtons. But the thing that often catches you is this. Who accelerates more? That's the thing you see. You don't see the force. You see the acceleration. So who accelerates more? Well, the acceleration of the skydiver is much greater than the acceleration of the Earth. Because the mass of the skydiver is much less than the mass of the Earth. There's even a nice little extra credit with this. Take all the people on Earth at the same time, have them jump down. We'll talk about that one in class. So that's it. There's Newton's third law in a nutshell, which you have to worry about. There's another page we'll talk about, but don't worry about that yet. This page is basically, well, wait a minute. If all forces are the same, how come anything even happens at all? There's a very clean and easy answer to that. We'll just get to that. So uh, this empowers you to do W66. In fact, if you go on the drive, plus I've already printed it for you, and sickos who weren't here, 
The extra packets are on the back table. Don't take another packet if you already took one. So 6-6 six, six is in here if you need to. And it's a quickie. There it is. Boom. These looks like a lot. It's not a lot. Like here. The astronaut puts 75 newtons on the satellite. What's the force satellite puts on the astronaut? Of course. There's a couple here we mess with FN and FG. Just think a little bit. And it's okay. Do this 6-6. Six, six, and uh, technically we'll have it due on Thursday rather than on Wednesday. So you can just worry about prepping for your quiz. All right, good. Now let's look at the next piece. So we're done with Newton's third law, the quick version. Let's go over to Newton's first law, the quick version, the law of inertia. You probably heard this one. A body at rest will remain at rest. And a body in motion will remain in motion at a constant velocity unless an unbalanced force, an F net, acts on the body. Well, this is pretty good. I mean, you sit a rock on a table, you sit a tired person in a chair, they're going to stay there unless there's some unbalanced force. And the more you want them to accelerate or change, the more the unbalanced force has to be. Things in motion will stay in motion. Now, that one may seem a little more strange because basically the world around is chock full of friction, but we'll talk about that too. So this is Newton's first law. And basically, let's not worry about all these details other than right here. Come on down here. Inertia depends on mass, not on speed. Basically, remember that inertia is mass. That's it. So we have some fun demos we'll do. And uh, the homework associated with this is a very quick one, 6-7. You have that in the packet, too. Here it is, one side of one sheet. Basically, which has the greatest inertia? Which has the greatest inertia? Just look for the thing with the most mass. And then if there's a question like, well, why does it stay where it is? Inertia. Why does it keep going without an engine? Inertia. Okay. So here's a couple of inertia videos that are kind of fun. So here is an interesting one. An object at rest likes to stay at rest. Let's see how this guy does. Interesting shirt she's got there. Watch this knucklehead. Nope. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you got that one, fella. So there was that girl was an object at rest, like to stay at rest. And he even was at rest when she turned and tossed him. However, she put a much more significant F net on him. Here we go. Whoop. And this is this serious move right there. Don't mess around. Now here's another one. Here's uh, we watched this video already a full time, uh, a few times rather. Here's an object in motion, stays in motion. Now, interestingly, this is also an object at rest, stays at rest, unless there's a net force. Now, if you notice, these things here, these are called quads. There's his rear end. They're massive because they generate a whole lot of force. So he has to apply a massive force to the ground, and the ground applies a massive force back to him in the way of friction, and that actually sends him forward. That's the F net on his body sends him forward so he does in fact go from an object at rest to an object in motion but then once he's in motion he stays in motion as the defender soon learns defender will be right around over here boom stayed in motion and kept on rolling there you go fridge changed uh, the running game forever here's another one how long does it take a train to stop? So they have a train here going about 100 kilometers per hour. It's about 60 miles an hour. Very standard cruising speed for a, uh, a commuter train. This is not a very heavy train, not too many cars. And you'll see that uh, when it needs to stop, it's a large object. It's got a lot of mass, a.k.a. a lot of inertia. So an object in motion stays in motion. Here we go. So this thing is trying to stop as quickly as possible. Notice it does not skid. That would actually be kinetic friction. It would take longer to stop. There you go. Over 320 meters. So we're talking about almost a quarter mile. Almost a quarter mile for a regular commuter train. Metro North, by the way, often gets up to 70, 80 miles an hour. Regular commuter train like that it took a quarter mile to stop. So that emergency stop, it's not doing it quickly. Uh, Here's another one that's pretty cool. They say the brake was applied at about the two-minute mark. So check this out. This is a longer train. Every single set of wheels has brakes, by the way. They're not just braking in the front. All of the brakes activate. And this thing's going about 40 miles an hour. It's not very fast.
You hear that? And so the brakes are currently applied. They are trying to stop this thing as quickly as possible. A lot of mass equals a lot of inertia. A lot of inertia, woo! That means a body in motion wants to stay in motion unless a sufficient net force is applied. Now, there's a whole lot of net force going on here. I guarantee if you touch these brakes, they'll burn your hand. But you need a lot of net force to stop this mass. So if we look at the clock, a good 40 plus seconds to stop that train. You know, that's significant. So that's why, you know, you break down on the track, get out of there, get out of there. Okay, so there's your business on inertia, and you saw the homework on it, and we'll talk a little more about this. Otherwise, you need to be worrying about tomorrow's quiz. Now, tomorrow's quiz is not based on Newton's third law or Newton's first law. Tomorrow's quiz I actually updated here in the drive. It's based on notes 14 to 16 and 19 to 21. 6, 8, 6, 9, and both 6, 11s. So these two are conservation of momentum. This was regular old P equals MV momentum and impulse, and this was the acceleration as a gatekeeper, you know, connecting the forces with the acceleration. Not a massive quiz, but, you know, there's a good few questions on there you've got to get sharp on. And what I'd recommend for you is go in here. The solutions are live, 6, 11, 1. That's the, uh, all the answer keys you need to see are live. 6.11.2, I'll link that live for you. Good. Check these over. So this is uh, last night's homework. Make sure you go through these. The, de the details are written out very carefully. And uh, make sure you feel sharp. So spend that time, and maybe I'll put a little practice up. You can always go on, do some blank questions all over again. You know, write them out on the paper. But get yourself right for that quiz. And W66 and 67 will be due... Uh, technically be due on Thursday. You know, we're going to talk about them on Wednesday. We're going to work on the stuff on Wednesday, but technically Thursday, and then we're basically done. You know, one last little homework to do, and we'll be all done with the unit. Unit test will be right after break on that Tuesday. All right, then. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.